Hi everyone, I'm Miss Laura and I'm here today with a fun craft idea that you can do at home. Now since I've been home for a while during this crazy time, I've been finding more um, reasons to want to write a, a diary, a journal, some poetry, and really just, you know, kind of trying to have a release during this time. And I found myself needing some journals. So today I thought that if maybe you were trying to write a little bit more or maybe keep a diary or maybe just need some extra scratch paper for your math homework, you might be interested in having a journal of yourself. So today I'm going to teach you how to make a DIY journal out of a cereal box. Let's get started. For our DIY journals, we're going to need some supplies. You're going to need a cereal box of any size, some cardstock for the cover, paper for the inside, Mod Podge or glue to keep everything together, a ruler, a needle and thread, some binder clips, and something to cut with. I used a box cutter, but you could also use scissors and it would work just as well. So first things first, you're gonna to wanna to get your cover for your DIY journal. And today we're using cereal boxes. So whatever size cereal box you have, that's what size you're going to cut out your cover. Your paper should be smaller than the cover. So if you have a big cereal box, you can use bigger paper. If you need to cut a smaller cereal box, your paper will be smaller. I'm going to be using eight and a half by 11 normal computer paper today for my journal. So I'm going to cut my uh, cereal box in a 12 inch by nine inch rectangle. It looks something like this, 12 inches across, and nine inches down the side. Once you do that, we can start creating our cover for our journal. Let me get the camera so you can see. This is my workspace here, and I have my nine inch by 12 inch cover. The first thing I'm going to do is to make it um, folded so that we can have a cover that is on both sides of our journal. So I already folded mine so you'll see my crease. Um, if I hadn't done that, what I would do is fold over so that it's nice and tight on the sides and then add the pressure on the crease to really get a nice folded cover. From here, we can start decorating our front of our journal. So I already cut out my cardstock today. If you haven't already cut out your cardstock, then you're gonna to wanna to do that. Your cardstock is going to wanna be the 12 inches by nine inches um, put together, but we're actually gonna cut it in half so that you have nine inches by six inches for the back cover and nine inches by six inches for the front cover. Together, all together, it will be covering up. We want to make sure that we are putting it in two separate pieces so that we have access to this middle seam when we do our paper inside later we're going to want to be able to um, go through this seam. So I'm using Mod Podge today. You can use regular glue if you prefer and I'm just going to cover my whole cereal box with uh, the Mod Podge. Do both sides of the cover. In one of my examples, I used wrapping paper for this portion, not cardstock. And I will say that with the Mod Podge and even with some scrapbooking glue or whatever you're gonna use, this cre uh, the sides and the uh, wrapping paper do tend to crinkle up. So while you can use wrapping paper, it's not really recommended by me since you won't be able to um, really withstand any moisture coming on your journal or any type of um, object that might interfere with that uh, thinner paper. It'll tear more easily and it will definitely not withstand any moisture, water, glue, uh, even the glue makes it a little bit wrinkled. And I can show you that later if you want. So I put on one side of my cover and I'm gonna use the other side as well. So I'm going to cover that up with Mod Podge as well. You don't have to use Mod Podge, you can use regular glue, but Mod Podge is a really great tool in crafting. Um, so if you're planning on doing lots of crafting and doing a lot of our tutorials here on the library page, I would recommend maybe getting some Mod Podge and uh, using that for the crafting. It's really simple, dries quickly.
and is a really great tool to use. So now that I've covered the Mod Podge all on the other side, I'm going to put my front cover on. I have words on my cover today, so I'm going to kind of try to line them up as much as I can. So I'm not worrying too much about the middle because it's going to be covered later on anyway when we seal in our work. Make sure that the cover's nice and stuck on there nice and tight. And then we're going to wait for this to dry a bit. So I'm going to put it off to the side and get my paper ready. Now. I'm using computer paper, like I said before, eight and a half by 11. I've already folded mine, but I will show you how to fold it um, as well so that you are caught up with me. If you need to make smaller paper, then you're just gonna cut it out to fit a little bit smaller than your cereal box size. I wouldn't recommend using a ton of paper. Um, I'm only gonna use a few papers today for mine, but you could probably go up to 20 pieces of paper and be okay. Um, I think I have less than that today, maybe closer to 10, and uh, so I just have a smaller notebook. But how many paper, pieces of paper you use is completely up to you. You just want to make sure that it's smaller than your cereal box size. Once you have your paper, you're going to stack it up just like this. Here's where the binder clips come in. These are going to be helpful for keeping the paper in place while you do your folding and while you do your sewing later on, which I'll explain later. So we're gonna take one binder clip and we're gonna clip them all together. Make sure that the corners are together so that the paper is stacked nicely. Mine actually weren't, so I'm gonna restack them. And we're gonna fold the paper. You can use a tool to help score the paper before you fold it. I'm not gonna do that today because I'm not too concerned. Um, about it being absolutely perfect and you don't have to either if you want to you know you're just going to take that tool and score it um, if you know how to use that tool so we want to make sure we're folding each paper individually this will help um, make sure that it's not going to be all wonky when we when we sew it in so i want you to clip one side of the paper and then fold over make sure that the corners are aligned and crease each individual paper that you use. This is going to make it so that your journal stays a little bit flat so that the papers are a little bit more even um, than if you just try to do it all at once with one big fold. So each one's going to be folded over and we're just going to crease it nice and strong. Like I said, mine was already creased because I had worked on this a little bit earlier today, but you can do the same thing with the not folded papers. Just make sure they're creased nice and strong on the page. One at a time going through this. I don't know if anyone was counting to see how many papers I have. And once you're done, get a big nice push onto that crease so it's nice and folded and it's not going to come unfolded on us at all. Depending on how much Mod Podge or glue you use, you might need a little bit more time for your cereal box to um, dry. I think I'm going to go ahead and move on to my next step, but first I need to make my paper um, clipped together perfectly. So I'm going to use the other binder clip and clip on the other side so that my paper is not going to move as I'm doing my next step. I'm going to bring back my cover. You can see it is a little bit drier, not completely dry yet, but that's okay. It will dry throughout the process and I'm just going to flip it over. Now the inside of my cover the inside of my cover, I'm going to keep this cardboard color. If you notice with my other journal, I put cardstock in the inside of this cover so that it'd be pretty on the uh, inside. But today on this one, I'm just gonna leave it this cardboard color. You could also paint the inside if you prefer um, or use cardstock on the inside, but uh, it's fine if you just leave it like this as well. We're gonna insert the paper using our needle and thread. So first I want you to line up the crease on the cardboard of the um, cover with the crease of the paper so that it's all lined up and then we're going to clip the paper in so clip the paper in so that it's not going to move on us 
when we do our um, next step. So we're clipping the cover to the paper. I'll show you what that looks like after I get it clipped. That way we're not gonna have it moving around when we are doing our next step. You can see I clipped the cover, to the inside paper, and the seams are all lined up together. For our next step, we're going to sew the paper into our cover using our needle and thread. This is a tricky part of it. I would recommend using a thimble or something to protect your thumb. If you don't have that, then just take it really slow and easy um, and sew it how, um, how I'm doing today. I don't have a thimble either. Now, in this example, you can see that I used pink thread in the middle of my journal. Today in my example, I'm going to be using a black thread. You need a needle and black thread and you want to tie a knot, want to tie a knot at the end of your thread. So just loop it around. You can use your finger or the needle and tie a really nice knot so that you are not going to um, allow that thread to go through when you poke a hole. I'm going to do a double knot actually. There we go, nice knot, nice double knot. Now, we want our stitches to be pretty close together if we want it to be nice and tight. You can see in this one I did it super close together. This one, I changed it up a bit and I made them a little bit wider. Both are gonna work. Um, the ones that are closer are probably going to last a little bit longer. What I'd recommend, um, if you wanna be very particular, is to take a ruler and a pen and mark your paper every half inch because that's really going to create a nice tight stitch when we do our sewing in a little bit. You can see I'm just doing little dots, doesn't have to be big, just something to indicate where that half stitch is. I wouldn't be too worried if you're not exactly on that half stitch. So you can see all the dots that will help me you see those dots do my sewing all right guys this is the trickiest part of the whole thing and that is sewing the pages in to our binder you're going to start or our full our uh, journal you're going to start on the outside so you're going to stick your needle trying to find that first dot through our cereal box and through the paper. Sometimes it works better if you do the cereal box and then you do the paper. It makes it a little bit easier. And we're just going to pull that needle through. We're going to do a straight stitch all the way down our journal here. So that's a simple stitch. We're just going to go back down through the paper at that other half inch mark. With paper, be careful of your fingers, and then through the cardboard, pull it through, and now our needle's on the other side again. So we're just going to do the same exact thing we started with. We're going to go through the cardboard again, the cardboard of our cereal box, trying to hit that half inch mark. Go through the cereal box. And then through. Ah, oh, this one's tricky. Through the paper. This takes some time and some practice, but um, eventually you will get your stitch all the way up to the top. I'm going to pause you right now so that I'm going to finish this out. I'll meet you back with some TV magic. Ta-da! I'm back and I have my entire notebook sewn together through the papers about, about every half inch apart. Um, I made sure to end on the outside, so I went through the back. And all I'm going to do now to finish out this stitch is just tie a knot. So that we don't lose our stitch later on. I might do a double knot. Sometimes I do double knots. I 
And now we're all tight into our binding. Cut out the remaining thread you don't need. Cut on the outside of the knot, of course. And you're done with your thread. You can see on the back, we have our stitch. And then on the inside, we also have our stitch. You're done with your clips. So you can go ahead and take those off now that your pages are secure. Here's the part where you can, if you want, um, add a little enclosure to it. You want to put a button or a loop or something to try to keep your, um, f uh, your journal closed. Um, I'm not going to do that today, but if you're interested in doing that, there are tutorials online that can help you um, create buttons or create some enclosure for that. Make sure that your paper is nice and folded in. Put some pressure on that seam now that you have your paper into your um, journal. Oh, I keep say, trying to say binder. And we are almost done. Now you can leave this open. Um, it's not the, the prettiest. It's also not going to um, keep it very secure. I'm going to use a piece of cardstock to try and close out mine. Now you'll notice with this example, I use duct tape, which is probably the easiest way to, um, to enclose your thread. Just putting a piece of tape over the side keep it so that there's a nice binding and you don't have to worry about those stitches coming loose. On this one, you can see I use the cardstock um, piece, putting the cardstock over and then Mod Podging over to create that effect. Okay, so to seal my uh, journal today, I'm going to use a piece of cardstock. I'm using pattern cardstock. You can see it's a plaid pattern. And all I'm going to do is just Mod Podge this piece of cardstock, glue it on, ah, to the sides. So just cut it out so that it fits nicely as a little binding. Line up the edges nice like that. And then just go ahead and fold it over. Push it down nice and tight. Go on to the other side, push it down nice and tight. You could wait for this to um, dry, maybe put a book on top of it to keep it nice and flat. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with how mine looks right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish my journal out. The last step we're going to do is seal in all of our hard work. So I'm going to take my Mod Podge again, and this time I'm going to go all over the cover. This will help seal everything in. It will dry clear so you don't have to worry about it being all white, um, covering your beautiful cardstock, whatever you chose, or wrapping paper, or maybe you just left it in that plain um, cereal box cover. That's always an option as well. Kind of rep how cool your DIY is that you use a cereal box. Um, I have one like that as you saw earlier. And you know what? You could wait for this to dry before you do the other side. This time I'm just gonna open it up. Make sure it's nice and seems nice and creased before you do that so we don't mess up the screen scene. And then you're just gonna Mod Podge the other side as well. I wouldn't be too concerned about which way you do the Mod Podge. Just cover it all up. Like I said, you could wait to do the back and let the front dry. I've done that with another one that we put together, or I put together rather. Cover it all up. Make sure it's all nice and covered. This will help seal and kind of waterproof it a little bit more than just with normal paper would. Um, so it's a great tool to also make it less likely to rip. Um, there's still always a possibility of that happening, but it's less likely when you add this extra layer of Mod Podge 
dries pretty quickly. I'm going to leave it to dry and I'll meet you back. Now, as you can see, my journal is all dry and ready to go, ready to be used for whatever I may want to use it for. We have our paper inside. You might have more paper than I do, maybe a little less, depending on how many you use. We have it nice and sealed so it's not going anywhere and it is ready to go. And I also have another side of a material box that I can use to make another journal, maybe with some different cardstock. I said earlier that I also made an example with wrapping paper. Here's my example using wrapping paper. When I did this, I wrapped it up like a present, similar to how you would do around the holidays. And instead of gluing the front or the inside, I tried to glue into the flaps so that it wouldn't crinkle as much. That's maybe something you'd want to do if you were doing a wrapping paper journal. This journal also um, used the duct tape technique rather than cardstock, some good way to, to bind your uh, journal with a little bit less work. It also is smaller. You'll notice that when I used the big cereal box, I got one that was about, what was it, six inches by 12 inches. And this one is a little bit shorter because I had a shorter cereal box. It did everything exactly the same. All I had to do was cut the paper shorter on the inside to make it a smaller journal. In this one, you'll notice that I decided to keep with the DIY cereal box effect. I kept the cover of the Honey Bunches of Oats. I did not cover it with cardstock, but I did cover it with Mod Podge to make sure that the cardboard was nice sealed and sealed in. To change it up on the inside of this one, I used um, some fancy cardstock paper. Let's see if I can get it to show. So that there was a little bit something extra on the inside, which is always an option if you'd like to do that as well. So let me know if you make any journals for yourself. There's lots of different opportunities, lots of different options, and lots of different ways that you can create something uniquely yours with just some stuff from home. I'm Miss Laura, and if you guys decide to do this craft, please tag the library. Let us know how you like it. We have a lot of other programs going on, so make sure you check that out on our events calendar, and um, I will see you next time.